Today we are going to do a problem based on influence line diagram. Let us read the question one time. Draw influence line diagram for CFOs at C for the given propped cantilever beam. Make the ILD for every 1 meter. A propped cantilever of length 7 meter is given. Here we have to make influence line diagram for the shear force in the point C which is located at 2 meter from the point B. In the point C let us insert a sliding device. When we do that the shearing resistance from the point C is removed. So the beam is cut into two parts. The sliding device maintains the same slope at both the sides. Then we have to apply pair of unit loads. On the left side, the unit load should be acting downwards. On the right side, the unit load should be acting upwards. Now let us take CB and find the reactions. Let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0 in CB. When we do that, we are getting RC. For RC, we got a negative value. That means our assumption is wrong. We assumed that RC is acting upwards, but actually it is acting downwards. Now we have to find MC. Let us assume that MC is acting in the anticlockwise direction. To find out MC, let us take movement about B. When we take movement in the right hand side, clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. The unit load is acting towards the point B in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is 2, so 1 into 2. MC is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative. Finally, we are getting MC. For MC, we got a positive value. That means our assumption is correct. MC is acting in the anticlockwise direction. We just came to know for CB, MC is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So for AC, it should be acting in the clockwise direction. Now let us see the formula to find out the ordinate for shear force. Fc is equal to Ycx upon Ycc. To find out Ycx, we have to make sections. First in AC, we have to make a section at a distance of x from the point C. Then in CB, we have to make a section at a distance of x from the point B. YCC can be calculated using the formula YCB minus YCA. We already know that the slope in both of the sides will be same. So theta CA will be equal to theta CB. Now let us take AC and find out YCX. We already know that in AC, we have to make a section at the distance of x from the point C. Now let us find mxx, that is the movement in the section. We are going to find out the movement in the section from the point C. In this case, we are moving towards left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. The moment MC is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be negative. The unit load is acting towards the section in the clockwise direction, so it is also negative and the distance is x. Now let us equate mxx with the ei d square y upon dx square. Then let us integrate on both of the sides. When we integrate this, we will get ei dy upon dx. When we integrate 2, we will get 2x. 
when we integrate x we will get x square upon 2 c1 is the constant now let us integrate this equation again when we integrate this we will get eiy when we integrate x we will get x square upon 2 when we integrate x square we will get x cube upon 3 when we integrate c1 we will get c1x c2 is the new constant 2 into 3 we will get 6 in the point a there is a fixed support if there is fixed support there will be no slope so when x is 5 dy upon dx will be 0 in this equation let us apply x is 5 and dy upon dx is 0 when we do that we are getting c1 also in the fixed support there will be no deflection so when x is 5 y will be 0 in this equation let us apply c1 is 22.5 x is 5 and y is 0 when we do that we are getting c2 in ei dy upon dx equation let us apply the value of c1 in the point c we have to find the slope the point C is located when x is 0. So in this equation, let us apply x is 0. When we do that, we are getting theta Ca. We know that theta Ca and theta Cb will be having the same value. In the EIY equation, let us apply the values of C1 and C2. Finally, we have formed an equation for Ycx. In the point C, we have to find the deflection YCA. We know that in the point C, X will be 0. So in this equation, let us apply X is 0. When we do that, we are getting YCA. Now let us take the portion CB. In CB, we have to make a section at a distance of x from the point B. Now let us find mxx. Up to the section there is only one force that is the reaction in the point B. There is no other force. The reaction in the point B is acting towards the section in the clockwise direction so it will be negative and the distance is x. Now let us equate mxx with the ei d square y upon dx square. Then let us integrate on both of the sides. After integrating, we will get this. C1 is the constant. Now let us integrate this equation again. After integrating, we will get this. C2 is the new constant. In the point C, we have already calculated the slope. Here, point C is located when x is 2 meter. So, when x is 2, dy upon dx is 22.5 upon ei. In this equation, let us apply x is 2 and dy upon dx is 22.5 upon ei. When we do that, we are getting C1. In the point B, there is a vertical support. If there is a vertical support, there will be no deflection. So when x is 0, y will be 0. In this equation, let us apply the values of C1, x and y. When we do that, we will get C2. In the EIY equation, let us apply the values of C1 and C2. When we do that, we will get these. Finally, we have formed the equation for YCX. We have to find the deflection in the point C. We know that the point C is located when X is 2 meter. In this equation, let us apply X is 2. 
when we do that we are getting OECB we know the formula to find out OECC OECB minus OECA let us apply the values finally for OECC we are getting 114.333 upon EI we know the formula to find out the ordinate for the CFOs in the point C OCX upon OCC for the portion AC and for the portion CB we have formed OCX let us apply them we can eliminate EI finally we have formed the equations for FC now let us calculate the ordinates for calculating the ordinates from the point B to the point C we have to use this equation from the point C to the point A we have to use this equation in the point C we will have two ordinates one will be positive and one will be negative now using the ordinates we can draw the influence line diagram in the point D on the right side we have 0.417 and on the left side we have minus 0.583 now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video